Sure, we'll get the option. All right. This is cozy. So, so this is quite an honor for me because I'm a fan and I'm a reader and the history of these books that we're going to talk about are fascinating. Uh, I just want to start with the obvious thing. So, do you consider yourself a Chuck Norris fan? No. <laughs> no! Um, you know, it started by accident. It started with Vin Diesel. Uh, when he was in that movie, The Pacifier, it started with you know, people kind of poking fun at him for, for being this ridiculous character. And I was running a web hosting company. He had, spare domain name and spare time and it was like a Friday night and I couldn't find where my friends were and I uh, just found the funniest ones and put them together in like a random quote generator. So before we jump ahead, let's make sure that the audience, that everyone in the audience oh, yeah, has, sure. ex has experienced these books. Yeah. I can't see the audience at all, so I'm just making the assumption that there is an audience there. Uh, so, the, so the first book was 400 Facts About the World's Greatest Human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just going to read a couple at random just sure. because they're, they're all pretty good. Some people eat pepperoni on their pizza. Some people have mushrooms. Chuck Norris usually has Venezuela. <laughs> Let's do two more. <laughs> when you open a camp of whoop ass, Chuck Norris jumps out. And then last but not least, if Chuck Norris could be any type of tree, it would be titanium. Yes, this is all true. Now, uh, Chuck wasn't fond of the book when it came out. No. Um, the titanium thing just set him right over the edge. I, I don't know which one it was in particular, yeah. but for all I know, yeah, it was that one. Um, I mean, I had met him about a year or so before the books came out, but when the website was still really popular. And, you know, really nice guy. Um, he was shorter than you think. But he was a really, really nice guy. And he could still beat the crap out of me. And um, then when the, the book came out, we got promptly sued. <laughs> And he sued you because he knew secretly that it would help you sell books, or he thought he was going to scare you out of existence? That would be an unbelievable reason to sue somebody, like just to dump like a million dollars into a lawsuit to benefit a, a writing career that I didn't expect to have. Uh, that, would, that would be something. But um, yeah, uh, it, it was a copyright issue. Um, you know, it's like Chuck Norris, the brand, does not approve. And he, what was the result of this lawsuit? Uh, we settled, it was, you know, the lawyers won. Um, I, you know, we, we, this book came out and then, you know, a few months later they were like, hey, do you want to do another one? And I was like, didn't we just, I thought that we shouldn't probably do another one. And they were like, no, 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 no let, let's do another one. Um, and so then this one came out and then this one came out and then this one came out. And so it's been a wild ride. So you went to Brown. Yeah. And I know a lot of authors, I have a lot of friends that are authors. You're the first author I've ever met who studied cognitive neuroscience. Yeah, science people <laughs> yes, don't. from the crowd. There, there's one. <laughs> Another person. cognitive neuroscientist yeah. in the crowd. There are are, are you an actual scientist? Because I'm not a real cognitive. I just have the degree. So, I can't see the person, but you can tweet at me later. Explain the connection between neuroscience and Chuck Norris. Oh, okay. There is so yeah, um, it's interesting because you know this all started out as an accident, and people would start. Um, we got the content um, from people submitting it, and uh, the way the website originally worked was that you could only see one fact at a time, and so I knew that we had to have a really good experience because um, you know when you have a bunch of people huddled around a laptop uh, hitting F5 just to see new Chuck Norris facts, you have to make sure that you know they're enjoying themselves, I guess. Otherwise, they won't come back. Um, However, it turns out the public is not exactly the greatest place to look for comedic inspiration uh, on the internet. Actually, that's not entirely true. But, um, you know, I just saw the worst things ever of, from just people writing stuff. Like, uh, there's one that sticks out in my mind that was like, Louis Armstrong was the first man to walk on the moon. Uh, Chuck Norris was the first man to pee on the moon. And then, like, Somebody took the time out of their day to like register for my website and go and log in and you know write that up. It, they didn't take the time to you know read it over or you know fact check, and, but but then submitted it thinking like but this you, will be the next one but at you the fact, top of the list. But you fact checked the titanium thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, it got to the point where we were kind of rejecting like 95% of everything that came in. And, you know, that slowly crept up towards 99. And that got me interested in, you know, what is it about, you know, why, why, do, why do people do this? And that got me interested in uh, the brain stuff. 
So one of the things that we were talking about backstage and that I think is interesting is, could this book and then this series have happened in a non-Twitter, non-internet world? Like, wh what would have happened to this book if it were written 10 years ago? Um, that's a good question. First of all, I don't know if it would work because part of the novelty is that Chuck Norris kind of had this weird, well, not weird, he had you know, a lull you know, for so many years. Um, and I think part of, you know, like I said, part of the novelty is that all of a sudden here, here he is as this guy. Um, so I don't know if it would work because he was still on TV like 10 years ago-ish, right? I don't know, can somebody correct me if I'm wrong? I'm sure it's on Wikipedia. Um, it's definitely not in these books. <laughs> Uh, and, um, I mean, I don't think it would sell at all. Um, I mean, first, I can't imagine walking into an agent's office or a publisher's office and saying, you know, I've got a great idea for you. I want to write 400 fake facts about Chuck Norris and uh, convince you to sell them to the public. Like, that would, that would never fly. Um, it only worked because, you know, we had the benefit of the internet. Uh, and I mean, the site got started in 2005, so it was a little pre-Twitter, but uh, it was still post copy and paste. And was it the traffic on the website that actually convinced the publisher that there was an audience? Yeah, um, uh, about halfway through the process, before the book, the first book was published, like I had to send them, I think, another screenshot of like my, my stats to make sure that, you know, it hadn't fallen off and turned into something terrible. All right, so this may be a hard question, but is this series a little like the rock star that has a hit song and that you go on stage, you want to play your new stuff, and the audience keeps saying, no, we want to hear that song? You I mean, is, I mean is, will there be number five? Like, are you going to swear off Chuck Norris? Well, I mean, I don't like being the Chuck Norris guy because, like, that has too many connotations to it. Like, I never know, you know, what the other person thinks when I tell them, that, like, I'm the guy who started this because, you know, usually they don't believe me at first. And uh, then I have to, like, convince them. See, like, I believed you immediately. Well, because we had met before. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but, you know, I would just in the green room, somebody was talking about, like, you keep these books in your bag? Why do you do that? And, like, the answer is because literally when I go and meet people, they don't believe I'm the guy that did this. Um, and, you know, I'll go into a bookstore and sometimes, like, you know, have fun and be like, hey, I'm the guy that wrote this. Like, you know, how's it doing? Like, can, can I do a signing or whatever? And they're usually really upbeat about it, but they never actually check, like, my ID or anything to, to like, really confirm that I'm the guy on the front cover. So, so do you um, hear that, everyone? So you could all be Ian Spector. You can go to bookstores, and they'll believe you. Yeah, actually, if you look at your program, you'll notice that the picture they put for me isn't me. Um, so... We may need to see your driver's license yet. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Enjoy the book. And we didn't get, wait, wait, one more second, though. Tell us what you're doing next, just so we know. We're working on a new startup, uh, and I do consulting, we, uh, but the startup is really cool. Um, postcardsanywhere.com. It should be pretty neat. Launching in a couple weeks, hopefully. Awesome. Ian, thanks. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.